G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoyed today's episode. Now with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chug a prawn of the barbie, and let's get right into it. Posted by user gradthrowaway23, titled, Am I the asshole for ruining my daughter's graduation? My daughter and I have been estranged for about five years now, and have recently reconnected and are working on, slowly, repairing our relationship. As part of this, she's been airing out various grievances she's been holding against me all these years, as she doesn't think that holding on to them is conducive to a healthy relationship. A lot of these things are petty teenage grievances that I can't believe she hasn't let go of yet, but one of them stuck out to me. I mentioned it to my husband, and he expressed disbelief and disappointment in me for my actions at the time. I maintain that I didn't do anything wrong, but his reaction has me curious. Here's her email to me about the situation. My graduation was another thing. I don't know if you remembered, but you refused to let Gran come even though I told you how much I wanted her there because of how she'd supported me throughout uni. When I told you that I invited her, you said you wouldn't come if she was there, so I had to disinvite her by lying about there being a limit on tickets per person. As if that wasn't bad enough, you and Daddy refused to sit with each other, take pictures with me, or even go out for a celebratory meal afterwards. I have one picture from my graduation. One. And it wasn't even the professional one, it was just one that my friend took on her phone of me. I don't think you and Dad dealt with your split very well at all in regards to your children, but it really hurt me that you, the both of you, would be so selfish about that. I just wanted one afternoon. For some background, I'm estranged from my own mother and have split up with her father. She says it was selfish of me to not allow my mother to attend her graduation or to spend extra time with her father, but I think it was selfish of her to ask that of me. It's bad enough that she continues to keep in contact with her grandmother when I asked her not to. Anyway, I want to know if I really was the asshole here. In the comments, Small Kangaroo says, Yeah, you're the asshole. Your mother supported her through school, and you think you deserve to be more important than someone who actually played a massive part in her life? You don't have to talk to people. You could have just acted like a grown-up. If you want to be her parent, then be her parent. If a photo or sitting together is too much to ask, then you are immature and a pretty shit parent. To be honest, if you had pulled that shit with me, you wouldn't have been invited, and I would have kept my grandmother there. I agree. The day was not about you. It was time to put your differences aside or not attend. She seems to really want you in her life to put up with that. So yes, I think you're the asshole. I hope you'll find ways to be there for her in the future. If she does not already and you keep it up, she will resent you. If you want a relationship with her, you should apologize. You're the asshole. You took a moment in her life and you made it about you. I feel bad for your daughter. You need to take the gift that she's giving you about trying to talk these things out and learn from it. Apologize and mean it. Agreed. My dad ran out on my mom because that's just what businessmen in the 80s did. She eventually got tired of it and left, and he spent a fortune on a fancy lawyer to beat her publicly funded lawyer to avoid a fortune in alimony, because that was also what businessmen in the 80s did. She hated his guts, and he hated her for ruining his perfect businessman family image. I knew nothing of it because my parents were grown-ups who didn't bring their kids into their problems, and he did pay child support quite generously at least. They sat in the front row of my college graduation, smiled in photos, and interacted cordially throughout, because that's what grown-ups do. You're the asshole, OP. Act like a grown-up. Check out the subreddit, Raised by Narcissists, could probably help you understand your daughter's point of view. Back up to the post, OP adds an edit and says, Though I disagree that my feelings weren't even worthy of consideration in this situation, would it not have been best if she'd asked me for compromise? For example, I would attend the graduation, and she could have a celebratory meal with her father and grandmother separately afterwards. I can see here that the overwhelming consensus is that, in this instance, I was the asshole to my daughter. Fine, I'll apologize again. Update. Hi, it's been a while, and I'm not sure if anyone would even care at this point, but I accidentally logged into my throwaway on an old laptop, and I remembered this. Quite frankly, I'm really embarrassed and ashamed to reread my original post. 
My attitude was terrible, and it's one of those moments I wish I could go back in time and shake some sense into my past self. As many people in the comments predicted, I no longer have a relationship of any kind with my daughter or two of my other kids. COVID and lockdowns did a number on our family, I'll just say that. I've been doing a lot of reflecting and therapy over the last year, and I realize I've not been the kind of mother my children have needed in their lives. I have no contact with my daughter now, who was married and moved abroad, and from her wishes, this will not be changing anytime soon. I also have very little contact with two of my other children. My relationship with my final child is strained, and I am doing everything I can to not break it. After having logged into this account again and seeing that post, I find myself desperately wishing to go back in time, and maybe I could have stopped the breaking of my family if I'd behaved differently here. I don't really know what I want to say here. Maybe just hopefully encourage one person who has been deemed the asshole to reflect sooner rather than later, and maybe their lives won't go the same way as mine. Edit to add, I'm going to log out of this account again. Maybe I'll pop up again in another four years with better news. Thank you for the comments and advice that I've received, and to those who think that I'm beyond redemption, I truly hope that you're wrong. In the comments, hey. I know that probably wasn't an easy post for you to write, but I'm glad you did. Your original post was a lot, but it sounds like you've turned a corner in therapy and have developed a lot of self-awareness. My mum too ruined my graduation and my wedding too by making it about her. We were no contact for many years, but even when we did speak again, she had absolutely no remorse for any of the things she did. She passed away a few years ago, and whilst I have no regrets about going no contact as it was necessary, I find it very difficult that I will never get an apology from her. I'm not saying contact your daughter. Respecting her wish of not being in touch is the right thing to do, but take what you've learned from therapy and demonstrate that you are sorry to the kids that you are in touch with in how you behave, not through words. It might not pan out, but they deserve that from you, and once they see that it's genuine, they may be able to reassess how they feel about the relationship, but good on you for going on this journey. A lot of people don't. Bendy Biznatch says, I know comments saying your kids won't talk to you can feel like an attack, but it often comes from people that have been there and can tell the child is at a breaking point. What really caught me was that you've been there with your own mother. I hope others see that and reflect on their own actions as well. Just because we've cut out the toxic people in our lives doesn't mean that we can't end up in the same position if we don't work on our relationships. I do wonder if her mother cut her off for the toxicness instead of the other way around. OP says, My mother and I have begun to repair our relationship over the last three years. Someone asks, What happened with the other kids? And OP says, My son was, or is, a COVID denier, and we clashed during the height of lockdown on the best way to go about things, and our relationship has not recovered since. Similarly to my eldest daughter, my daughter has been struggling with issues from her childhood, which were my fault, and being forced into one home during lockdown exacerbated her feelings, and she's now taking time to put some space between us until she's ready to decide how and if she wants to move forward. I have respected this. When I say my relationship with my youngest is strained, I mean in the sense that she very clearly feels conflicted about staying loyal to me versus her siblings. As she still lives at home, I see the fallout of this personal conflict and see how it strains our relationship, and I'm doing my best not to make her think that she has to pick sides while also trying to improve the quality of our relationship. As I don't have contact with her siblings, I don't know if they also feel like their relationship with my youngest is also strained. On OP's own mother, they say, My mother and I have begun to repair our relationship over the last three years. What are you doing differently with your approach to your kids still in contact? And OP says, I'm only in full contact with my youngest currently, but to answer your question, listening to her and respecting her space and boundaries. That's breaking it down to its simplest form, but essentially that's what I've been working on with my therapist, and from conversations with my children, is the crux of the issue they have with me. Gremlin at Work says, Who could have predicted that respecting space and boundaries was the real solution all along? You shouldn't need the Oracle of Delphi to tell you that. Sadly, I think it might be too late for OP. Some things are hard to get back. OP is practically estranged from every single family member. This is going to take a lot of work. 
Not often do I see posts where people realise they're in the wrong and did some reflection to change themselves. Based on the description, it sounded like Opie and the daughter's relationship was really pretty rough. Not sure where the future can lead, but I do applaud OP for actually admitting their faults. But it does sound like things are a bit too late to fix at this point. I wish the daughter the best. Agreed. I mean, since no one can change the past, pretty much the best case scenario is for someone to realise that they messed up and to make efforts to change. And it certainly seems like OP is doing that. Whatever happens in the future, that change is a positive step. Our next post is by user lemongrab11 titled, Am I the asshole for wanting to divorce my husband over a sport? Obviously this isn't only about a sport, but let me get into it. I should preface by saying me, female 23, and my husband, male 26, have both been toxic with each other, so I'm no saint either. Recently, he started playing a sport with work friends which is cool. Sunday, he said he would like to go play, we always hang out with each other on the weekends, so I was a bit upset, but he told me he'd be back at 9pm since he was leaving at 5.30pm. He ends up going and staying out until 1am. I was pissed since he kept texting me that he was leaving. The reason he came home at 1am was because someone bashed their head and they took him to the emergency room. He left his phone in the car and couldn't text me about it, I got over it. Monday, he says he wants to practice again after work and told them he has to leave by 6 to get home for dinner. He ends up staying until 10 to 10.30 p.m. Again, he kept texting me, I'm leaving now, sorry, and just wouldn't leave. He apologized again, but I was upset. Tuesday and Wednesday, he does the same thing. I haven't even seen him at all, and I'm upset. I tell him that he can't be coming home that late. I want to spend time with him and have dinner before bed. We get into a huge argument because he gave me a compromise. He would go Tuesday, Thursdays and Friday, Saturday or Sunday if there's a game. I said I would agree as long as he came home at 8.30, but two hours of playing was not good enough for him. They usually play for four to six hours. He told me I don't understand what it's like to want to be better at something and that all I want to do is be in bed, and that I'm parenting him by barking orders. He got into a small car accident Thursday morning. Someone hit his truck from behind. I went to go check on him. Since then, he has been driving my car to go to work, 35 minute commute. I've been getting rides from co-workers, which is only a 3 to 4 minute commute, but it's inconvenient for them. I asked him if he would pick me up from work today, and he was like, uh, I was hoping to play today. This, along with everything that's been going on, and everything he's been saying to me, was the final straw for me. So I told him I wanted a divorce. He told me since everything isn't about me recently, I'm threatening him again, and I don't respect him. There's more, but what do I do? Am I in the wrong? Posting anonymously because he's on Reddit, and if he sees this, I don't care at this point. Update, he came home at 11 yesterday and texted me, not that it's any of your business, but some guy he plays with, I'm assuming, had a seizure. Then he texts me in the morning letting me know that he's going to the gym and to pick up his phone and wallet that he left at the gym. I guess my personal take on this one is that if it is true that he's playing a sport up until this late at night, he is neglecting you and your family. My initial inclination here is just that, oh my god, it sounds like cheating. You know, if there's smoke, usually there's fire. But it's not really fair to label all stories that you think could be cheating as cheating. But with what little information I do have on this story, I think that the fact that he sees no problem with the majority of the week not being home and not spending time with you and not having dinner with you at all until 1am is a huge problem. Perhaps the call for a divorce was a bit rushed in this case, but... If you had given him a significant amount of time to change and an ultimatum and he still chose not to, I think that's more than fair. In the comments, Inception235 says, I have to say, what the hell is this sport? If it's as fascinating as he makes it sound, maybe we could all benefit. That said, your frustrations are fair. You shouldn't drop the divorce card quite this casually though. Do you anticipate this hobby going on long term, or is it just for a couple of weeks? OP replies, Volleyball, <laughs> I agree, and I'm assuming long term because once he likes something, he continues doing it. 
If he's driving your car and refusing to pick you up, take the keys back and don't let him drive it. Tell him to find other means. I might be a bit fickle, but someone playing volleyball until 1am? I just don't believe that. And playing it every day? OP replies, he said that one of the players bashed their head on the pole and he just picked him up and took him to a car and went with them. Left his phone and car there so he couldn't text. I don't know. I don't really believe that. Got to agree with the other commenter. Have you gone to any of these practices? Seriously, five to six times a week is ridiculous. Maybe you should be going out so many times a week, make sure he gets his car fixed, and let him see what it's like when you're not waiting at home for him with dinner ready. He takes you for granted. What happens if you have kids? OP says, Exactly my thoughts, and he's been asking me for kids, but I'm not ready until we go to therapy. Armchair Detective replies, Get on birth control ASAP. Update. My intuition was right. Let me explain. After I posted that I tried to make things work with my husband, he said he didn't know if he wanted to be with me, and that he would let me know on what he decides. I begged and begged. He said that I'd hurt him for mentioning divorce, that it doesn't matter anymore, there was a 0.1% chance of us being together, that he's been going to church, and wanted different values for himself, that he could even reinvent himself if we divorced. He said that I could stay instead of going back to my parents and do the things that I said I would work on for me, not him, and to not get my hopes up. He continued to go play this sport. Every time I texted him, he was cruel and continued to tell me that there was barely any chance of us fixing our marriage. Fast forward, I decide to leave because why would I stay when he kept saying that? When I left, he got angry, said he knew that I wasn't going to do the things that he asked. When I landed, I begged again. I said I would stay two weeks here and then go back to talk. He continued to say the meanest things. I told him I was done, this time for good. He got upset at me and again verbally abused me. The next day, I get an anonymous Facebook message. He's been having sex with someone for over two weeks. This hurt, knowing that I wasn't crazy about him playing volleyball until 11pm. I haven't confronted him and plan to do it soon. How can he throw away five years of our marriage being with each other since we had nothing? I don't understand why he would be the person he always despised to be the most. His dad. I'm so lost. In the comments, Seanderson143 says, Don't confront him. See if who messaged you has proof and send everything to his command. Officers, not staff NCOs, including any verbally abusive texts. He's military, so blow his shit up. Chances are, the town his base is on has a Cheaters of Name of Town Facebook group. Post his shit there. If there's a Wives of Name of Base group, then post it there too. You are young and you will recover from this. OP says, The person who messaged me never sent me proof. I'm sure it was the person that he's with. I'm also sure that she's in the military as well, so she doesn't want to get in trouble, which is why I want to catch them in person and record it. BiteMe717 says, Not the asshole, and out his affair to everyone. He's been cheating for a while. Get tested for STDs and never speak to him again. Co-parent through an app. He's a liar, cheater, coward, and a piece of shit man. And OP says, No kids, luckily. I go back in a few days and I'll be telling everyone, including his CEO. Exactly this, and make sure that he can't dispute the proof. And OP says, yes, he doesn't know I'm coming back. I rented a car and will be following him for a day to get the proof I need. The only proof I have is the anonymous texts and seeing on the cameras that he's been staying somewhere overnight. Icy Cockroach says, the moment I saw the list of emergencies, I already knew that there was cheating involved or someone in that friend group raided a pharaoh's tomb. Yup, only halfway through I was like, honey, the only sport he's playing is one where there is no uniform and requires only equipment that he was born with. <laughs> Gymnastics. He's her husband and staying out late. How is it not her business to know why, especially if he has her car? This guy's an asshole. And he just became more of an asshole the more I read. OP needs to stop begging to have him back. 
quote, my intuition was right, proceeds to post paragraph on top of paragraph of how she begged and pleaded with a guy treating her like shit to stay with her and to still love her. Where's the intuition? She got a Facebook message. How was that intuition? She didn't listen to anyone, let alone intuition. She had the gut feeling, except she put a lot of effort into ignoring it because she didn't want it to be true. At least she has the excuse of being young. And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.